What is the hardest challenge run you can accomplish in the Souls games? Well, some may say level 1 runs, some may say no upgrade runs or speed runs. For me personally, no damage runs have always been something to marvel at, and I really wanted to have my go at one. So, after a lot of practice, I tried beating Elden Ring without ever taking any damage. Here is how it went. For our starting class, we're gonna choose the Samurai, of course, as the bow and the Uchigatana are just too good not to have at the beginning. We also grab the extra runes as a starting gift. Now, while I get myself out of the tutorial area, let me explain to you the rules. First, my health can never be lowered below my starting amount of health, which means things like self-damaging skills are not allowed, or taking fall damage is not allowed, etc. Second, the Grafted Scion tutorial boss can be skipped. Dying or taking hits in the tutorial area is mandatory to progress, so I won't bother trying to defeat him. Trust me, there is going to be plenty of hard bosses to take down, so it's not worth wasting your time on this one. Alright, I already did a no-hit run, but I did it in the most cheesy way possible with sorceries and incantations. So for this one, we are going pure melee boys, and the setup for the build is gonna reflect that. First on our path we grab the flail and the strength not crystal tier, for a nice strength boost. Then we swing over to the knight patrolling this area to collect from him golden vow for a nice damage boost. Along the way we collect a ton of smithing stones, mushrooms and Trina's lilies, which are going to be required to craft sleep pots later on. Finally, we grab our physics flask and collect the spiked crack tier and the axe talisman inside of Mistwood. These items are the most important ones, as our entire route is gonna be relying on charge attacks. With this we want to swing over to Caleb, cheese the knight's cavalry patrolling the bridge at night to grab some necessary runes, and go over to the dragon barrel merchant for the beast repellent torch. This item is super cool, because it makes all the beast type enemies passive while you hold it in your hand, very very good for no damage runs. Quick side note here. I won't be able to explain all the strategies in detail here, so if you wanna see the full run, go over to my VOD channel, I'll upload the entire thing over there, links in the description. To progress through the game, we gotta collect the two medallion halves, so we sneak our way through Fort Ferroth for the first half, together with Radagon's sword seal, and slowly clear out Fort Haith with our bow to collect the second half of the medallion, and with that in hand, we move our sights onto Lyurnia. In this area, unfortunately, we have to commit a great sacrifice for our success. I'm so sorry man. With Bogart's untimely death, we do receive the Iron Ball. He passed down onto us the most important and powerful piece of his body. And with it, we will do great things. With us now having access to Altus, we swing over there to grab the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 2 and finally go back to Caleb to grab Flame Grant Me Strength and the Ash of War Crackblade near Redmain Castle. Our Iron Ball can now be upgraded to plus 12, so we are ready to move on to the boss destruction process. Surprisingly, we're gonna start off with our boy Patches first. We need to take him out because we want the Margit Shackle, so we can trivialize both Margit and Morgoth later on. After taking down our boy Patches, we go buy the Shackle from the Twin Maiden, and so the process begins. The strategy for Margit is brain that simple. Shackle and literally beat his ass. And goodbye Margit. Fuck! You! Honestly, Margit is not even a boss in this run, guys. Passing through Stormvale, though, is not so simple, as there are a lot of obstacles to overcome here. First, we make sure that it's nighttime in the game, as to reduce overall enemy aggression. Then, we need to precisely dodge the ballista shots along the main entrance. Once you got the timing for this down, it's really not that bad. Then, we have to sneak past the kitty cat and grab the first grace on the bridge. From here we need to proceed very sneakily and carefully, along the way assassinating enemies with our bow to clear out the path to the second ballista garrison. Here a simple sleep pot on the ballista guy is gonna give us enough time to run past all the other enemies and slowly sneak behind the blockade to grab the second grace before Godric. Before we enter into the fight, we want to grab a couple of pots behind our pot friends, which almost ruined the run right here because I wasn't careful enough to avoid them, but with my dead cat-like reflexes, we managed to scrape through. Godric is a super scary fight for me in this run, as there is no algorithm to utilize against him, so patience and logic are our only friend. Come on, Godric. Do the, do the stupid attack. Thank you. Now don't do the... Thank you, Godric. 
Godric is one of the bosses that is not actually scripted, guys. So you can actually... You can theoretically get hit here. But... Thankfully, he's also very easy. So killing him is no problem. Uh, the reason why you saw the health kind of like... Is because of this. I didn't take damage. You, you just, I just did this. I know that's gonna confuse some people. See? One demigod down. Now it's time for another one. Before that though, we go ahead and activate Godric's Great Rune for plus 5 to all of our stats and swing over to Altus to obliterate our beautiful girl Gilika for the Ritual Sword Talisman. Our second demigod of choice is gonna be Radan, as getting to Renala is just much more riskier than fighting this guy straight on. Radan is no cakewalk either though, as with our weapon of choice our super low range can make us miss a lot of our attacks and you do need to land all of your attacks to kill him fast enough. But in the end, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? What? Nice! There we go! Let's go! Radan first phase down. This is a very hard kill for me, guys. Let's go! A huge obstacle has now been overcome. The biggest obstacles for me personally are Radan and Malekith, as the strategies for them are quite delicate and can be messed up really easily. So having this one out of the way felt great. Before we venture into the capital, we gotta collect three more things. The first being a spell called Unseen Form. This spell is a lifesaver. Cause of the no damage rule set, the most important ability Assassin's Gambit is banned. So Unseen Form fills in the void almost perfectly. It's not as good as Gambit, cause it doesn't silence the sound you produce, but it's still extremely useful. With the spell in hand, we now wanna make our way through the high road cave. Watch out for the wolf hiding the bushes here, he's a real asshole. After we make it to the end and obliterate the golem boss fight, we get the blue dancer charm for even more damage. The last important item is Roger's rapier, which he gives to you in the round table after you defeat Godric. This weapon will be essential later on during the Malika fight. Now we are finally ready for the capital, but as always, the DTS has to be felt first. GG! Good fight. Are we ready, boys? This is a difficult boss fight. Very, very difficult. Let's go! Heart rate monitor is needed, man. Alright, boys. No hit, Morgoth. Wait for stamina. Slap. <clears throat> now we wait for him to do his... Oh my god, almost died. <laughs> what? 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 What the hell was that? Why is this run cursed today, guys? The game is literally trying to bamboozle me every step of the way, guys. I just want to mention that we are still on a plus 12 upgrade level for the Iron Ball, and we are already doing absurd amounts of damage. These things are just way too unassuming. Anyways, Melina, Rolled Medallion, and the Mountaintops. That is our next battle. Inside of the Zamo Ruins, we can now collect the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 3, which will allow us to upgrade these bad boys all the way up to plus 19. Four, you guessed it, even more damage. The only other thing that's important to pick up here is the ancient smithing stone inside of a skull right outside of the fire giant's arena. The strategy for this guy is a bit interesting. It's primarily centered around putting the giant to sleep twice, once in the first phase and then again in the second phase. 
so pay careful attention to the sleep pot timings for this one. Let's go, boys! There we go! Fire Giant, no hit! Woo! The combination of sleep pots plus staggers from the Iron Ball is just moi, chef's kiss. After conversing with Melina and burning down the Earth Tree, we waste no time and head immediately towards the Foreskin Duo. Be careful when traversing this place though, the enemies here tend to be more jumpy than my two kittens. Lost way too many runs in this place. Fighting the duo is just a matter of invisibility, sleep pots and a lot of damage. The only real issue that can arise with them is after they are both killed, we do need to wait for one of them to respawn. But as long as you manage to sleep him as well, this fight shouldn't pose that much of a threat. Honestly, even the walk to Malekith is just one giga giant hellhole for no damage runs. You can get hit here in so many different ways, it's sickening. Thankfully, I failed this so many times that all of those hits are burned into my brain forever. So avoiding those hits now is a lot easier, but it's still pain. The Lightning Bird Dragon Bridge is overcome by sticking to the lower path of the plateau and rushing towards the rooftop part so that the lightning cannot touch you. Here we fire a mighty shot arrow right into that stupid dragon's face, which for some reason turns him into Son Goku because he always instant transmissions out of here. From here, the rest of the enemies can be avoided easily. No, don't go after me, don't go after me, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. I'm on a good run, I'm on a good run. If you didn't know, you can't outrun these birds, so having them aggro on you is an immediate heart attack. As I said previously, this place is a giant hellhole. Before the next fight, we swing back to the round table to upgrade our balls to the maximum. I haven't really talked about the build that I'm rocking, but that's because it's literally just a pure strength build. At the end of the run, you should be having 85 pure levels into strength. Alright. Malekith time. This guy took me a whole while to nail down, metaphorically speaking. That's because while the strategy isn't difficult per se, the spacing and timing required to pull this off is. Staggering him during the first and the second phase is key here. That is precisely where Rogier's rapier comes into play. Its Ash of War glint blade phalanx does insane posture damage that will greatly assist us in accomplishing our goals. We fail or we win. There's no other way. No, run towards me, bad RNG. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yes! Let's go! That was the biggest obstacle, guys. That was the biggest obstacle. We are in the home stretch now. Only bad luck and the distractions from YouTube chat can now bite me in the ass. Jesus, take the wheel. So basically the strategy for Gideon is this. When he says alas, you do a jumping R2, followed by charge R2, charge R2. I commend your spirit, but alas, none shall take the time. No. GG, two bosses remaining. Let me just go over the strategy. So we go in, charge R2, he goes away, we jumping L1, R2, run away, then we continue, blah blah blah, okay. In the immortal words of George St. Pierre, anxiety is good, it will make you sharp.
Yes! The only thing I'm gonna say from now on, guys, is let's fucking go. Let me calm down for a second here, Jesus Christ. The thing is, I can ri right now run a marathon from the adrenaline. Okay, let's do this. GG! Let's go! Guys, no damage, Elden Ring, any percent. Done.